Good morning, afternoon and evening my crazies. Uh, my name's Angela and I'm the Crazy Poppy Lady and I'd like to welcome you back. So today we have another pattern coming out to you. Now that today it is this one, it is the hat and the scarf set. Now this is called the Puzzle Piece a Pocket Shawl. So today I'm going to show you how to make the scarf and then I am going to be popping a link up here to our gorgeous Sabrina Melodieu. Now she has made the hat section of this pattern because the two of us have been team working this one for quite a while. Um, I came out with the idea of the puzzle piece and uh, she chose the uh, stitch for the brim. Now I think the stitch works absolutely beautiful, it's lovely and it's textured so it gives the child or adult something to um, and to play around with if they're a fiddler <laughs> like um, my family members are now we have decided to do this one because of both of our families have individuals in there who um, have autism or Asperger's okay so they're wired slightly different just like me with my dyslexia um, so we were hoping to get this one out for autism awareness um, month or week no it's autism sorry autism awareness week but it got delayed so uh, we are bringing it out to you today now actually a national autism awareness and day start um week sorry starts on march 29th so this year it's going to be march 29 2022 oh, got a bit of time and it ends on april the 4th 2022 now at the actual World Autism Awareness and Day is April the tw April the fourth. Okay, so um, it's a good idea. Closer to time, um, I will shout this pattern out again, of course, and um, I will give you uh, more information on autism, um, autism awareness, and uh, where you can uh, find different information in the uh, drop down box of this video. I uh, will be uh, taking you through to um, at least one charity if I can find it that's solely raising funds for autism awareness okay and helping people in the UK if you choose to join in with this tag that would be absolutely amazing and especially if you could put um, in your description of your video um, your local autism charity all right so let's jump down to that camera and let's get on with the scarf right so for the scarf you are going to need 100 grams of um, DK yarn in grey 75 grams of a DK yarn in your option B colour and then probably only 5 to 10 grams of a multicolour yarn that is for your puzzle piece so you can also change that out for a plain colour yarn if that's how you feel you are going to need a four millimeter hook for the main body of the scarf and then either a 3.5 or a three depending on your tension um, so a 3.5 or a three millimeter hook for the puzzle piece and also of course your darning needle and maybe some stitch markers if you feel that that's what you need so that is the amount of yarn that I have used for not only the scarf and but the hat what I suggest is if you want to make the set and go over to Sabrina Melodieu's um, hat video tutorial first I will put the link up here make the hat first and then come back and see me for the scarf that way you know you're not going to be playing yarn chicken at any point while making the hat and it also means you'll know exactly how much yarn you've got left over to make that pom-pom right so and now let's move on and get on with the scarf now I am only going to be doing a short sample for you because I need to get on and make it <laughs> Right, so to start the scarf, what you're going to do is make a slip knot and pop that on your hook. Now we are going to do a foundation double crochet chain. Um, to do your foundation double crochet chain, 
And what we're going to do is make a slip knot and pop it on your hook. And we are going to uh, chain up three into this third chain from your hook. You're going to hook over and place your hook through, pull up your yarn, hook over again, pull through one. Oh, I said one. <laughs> there we go. Hook over, pull through two, hook over and a pull through two. Okay, so that is your very first double crochet. So, and now we're going to do that again and the placement of it this time round is if you turn it turn your work you will see that you have got your little V's forming on the bottom here so you're going to take that end V making sure that you get under both parts of your work sorry this is a bit awkward for me because I can't actually see what I'm doing <laughs> Ow. Right, so we go into both parts of the work like that, hook over and pull through, hook over, pull through one, hook over, pull through two, hook over, pull through two. So what you're going to do now is you're going to carry on doing your chain in the same method, okay? So it's a hook over and go through both parts of that single stitch at the bottom. Pull up your yarn, hook over, pull through one, hook over, pull through two, hook over, pull through two. Now, when you're doing this, make sure that that very first pull through here is kept quite loose, all right? The tighter it is, the more stable and thick the fabric will be. So let's do that section again for you. As I have been talking, we are going to hook over and we are going to place our hook through that V at the bottom, hook over. And pull through keep this stitch loose hook over pull through one hook over pull through two hook over pull through two so again next stitch hook over and go through your V hook over pull through keep that stitch loose hook over pull through one hook over pull through two hook over pull through two and just keep going until uh, your chain um, is the length that you need. Sizing information. Now, when it comes to um, upsizing this project, I'm making this for a child. So my chain count will only be 16 um, double crochet stitches. Um, if you are going to upsize to an adult, then make it 22 stitches. OK, and if you're upsizing in between sizes and do it in multiples of two up until 22. Right. So, as I said, I have got here 16 stitches and now this is for the children's scarf. So and now let's get on with a row two. So for row two, what we're going to do is a chain up three. And then turn your work. Now, not into this uh, chain spot, but into uh, the next stitch along, we are going to place a double crochet. And then we will be a uh, double crocheting all the way along using a double crochet for a count of 16, and that includes our chain. So uh, once you have uh, your 16, 18, 20, 22, meet me back here and at the end of the row uh, for the next row's instructions. Right, so uh, we are coming up to the end and this is the very last stitch in the row which is at the top of the chain to uh, chain three. So what we are now going to do is uh, swap our colour to pink and to do this I like to do this halfway through the stitch. So I hook over, I go through my chain and pull up my yarn. I go through two loops and stop there. This is where I now add the pink yarn and I pull that through the remaining two loops on my hook. And now I'm ready to use just the pink, so I drop the grey to one side. Now we will be chaining up three, turning our work and not into the chain spot but the next spot along we will be placing a double crochet. 
Now we are going to work a pink row of double crochet all the way along our work. When you get to the end, meet me back here. Now this is also the start of the repeat for the pattern. Right, so here we are coming up to the end of row three. So our last stitch goes through the third stitch in your chain. Okay, double crochet, chain three, and turn. Now for row four, it is also a row of double crochet in pink. When we get to the end of this row, we will be changing back to gray using hopefully the same trick I taught you previously. So I will see you back there in a second. Right, so now we are back at the end of a row four. So for this one, we will be swapping our yarn color out again. So place your hook into the top of the chain three, pull up your yarn a little. So it goes through the first two loops. And now using our yarn from our previous row, bring that up and bring that through the last two stitches now don't worry we are going to be working over this to make it nice and neat right so remember when adding this uh, strain in and do not pull it too tight keep it quite loose so that it is to the same height as the stitches that you have to the side of it that way it won't pull and it won't tug right so our next one next row is a chain three turn your work and then working into that second stitch so not the one where the chain is but the next one along we'll be put placing our double crochet and then we are going to work two rows of a gray so i'll meet you back here in a moment to swap color for the pink after i've completed two rows of gray so remember when you get to the end of the row it is a case of working your last stitch into the chain stitch uh, the top of the chain stitch sorry and then a chaining three and turning your work. I will see you at the end of this row, double row of grey. Right, so now we are at the end of a row six. So now we are going to be bringing up your colour option B again. Um, and we are going to do that in that last pull through on the double crochet. So pick up the third chain from the bottom hook over and go through two and then bring up your yarn and pull that through remember don't have it too tight because I want to give the work some movement still and then we're going to chain up three and turn your work and then again we are going to run a two more rows of pink and then we are going to run another two rows of a double crochet now this is the pattern throughout the entire blanket so it is two rows of pink, two rows of grey, two rows of pink, two rows of grey and just bring that yarn up each time you go. Now you will need to keep going until you get to the length that you need for your scarf. Now that will depend on the different method that you may use. As some people go from the chin, measure from the child's chin down to the floor. Other people will use the full length of or height I should say of the child so that depends again on the size of your child i am going or the adult that is going to sorry i should have put that in as well or the adult that is going to now i'm just going to keep going on this until i've got one that i hope will fit a child that matches the hat and um, that i've already made i don't have a child here to measure against and my kids were super duper tall um way taller than what they should have been for their age so they're of no help to me. <laughs> right, I will see you back here shortly with a row count of how many rows um, I have actually done. All information in regards to different lengths that we may need are in the description box and down below. Hopefully that will help you out a little bit as well for doing your own mental maths. Okay, so I've completed the length of scarf that I want which is a 22 repeats making sure that I've ended on a grey so both sides match up now for me that is a 48 inches or 122 centimeters which is for a size 7 give or take now you've got to remember I'm going by sizings that I found on the internet and I will place those details 
in the drop down box below so that it gives you a rough idea you will have to do a little bit of math yourself mind right now i'm just going to work my last double crochet into the scarf and then we're going to be working on our corners so don't cut your yarn off because we're just going to carry, um, work with it okay so what we're going to do is we're going to chain one and then into or around this stitch that we've just created we are going to place a half double crochet now we're going to place the second half double crochet around that stitch as well and then around every stitch running up going over your yarn um tails from previous rows we are going to do a two half double crochets around each of those stitches okay once you get near the end come back to the video and i will give you the next step right so you are just coming up onto your last um stitch now what you've done is or you should have done is a two around that chain space okay so now into your very first stitch here you are going to pop your hook in you are going to do a half double crochet okay now we'll turn our work a little bit so it makes it easier to see now we're going to chain one we're not going straight back into that stitch what we're going to do is a single around that double cro um, half double crochet then we are going to do a single into that very first stitch now working over any yarns and we're going to go a single crochet all the way down this edge until we get to the next corner i will see the, you there in a moment right so now we're back for this a very last stitch so into this very last stitch you are going to put a single chain one turn and then around the single we are going to do a half double and then into that very first stitch we're going to do a half half double crochet and then of course we're going to carry on going and down our work placing two half double crochets around each of those end chains now the reason i do my corners like that is because it gives you a nice square edge that's the only reason if you've got a way that you prefer to do it then go for it right i'm going to meet you at the um at last stitch before the turn in the corner at the top of the scarf okay so this next corner one is a little bit more finicky because we have just got the chain um, that goes around the corner so what we're going to do is we're going to do our two half doubles around the chain and then turn your work chain one and do a one in two or oh, sorry one around your half double and then you're going to look here and you're looking for your next stitch along go into your next stitch along and do another single and then we pick up the top of the chain twos or the bottom of the chain twos i should say and around a single all the way along there again that will give us our nice square corner so you just keep doing that all the way along i might as well do this last little section with you okay and as you can see we're coming up on our very last stitch here so we were working into a double crochet there so all we do is a single around that very first double crochet chain up two pull up your yarn and then cut it off and scooch your knot down and you're all done apart from of course sewing in any ends that are um on your work right so now let's um, move on to the pocket
Right, so now for the pocket, what we're going to do is start off with a foundation single crochet chain. And that is going to be to a count of 16. Now, if you haven't come across the foundation single crochet stitch before, then I have made a tutorial and the link will be just here. So if you need to um, have, it, have it sort of explained to you a little bit slower than what I'm going to do today, then hop on to that one and push repeat until it sinks in. Right, sorry, let's get on with it. Right, so what we're going to do is we are going to make ourselves a slip knot. Pop that on our hook. Right, pop that on your hook and then chain up two. In the second chain from the hook, pop your hook through. Hook over, pull up your yarn, keep that one loose. Hook over, pull through one, hook over, pull through two. Okay, so there is your stitch. Then we're going to do that again. And we're going to repeat that until you have a stitch count of 16, 18, 20 or 22, depending on what size scarf you have made. Okay, so for myself, I am going to be doing a size um, stitch count of 16. Right, I'll meet you back here in a few moments. Right, so you have got the amount of stitches that you need. As I said, mine is 16. So now what we're going to do is we are going to chain one and turn our work. Now this chain is not going to count as a stitch throughout this pattern. Okay, so now we're going to hook over and we're going to place a double stitch, double crochet straight into that very first stitch placement where the chain came out. And then we are going to double crochet all the way along. Okay, so once you've done your 16, 18, 20, 22 <laughs> stitches, meet me back here and um, I will give you the next row. Okay, so you're at the end of the row. Now we're going to chain up one and turn our work. Now we are going to single crochet all the way across this row. Okay, for a count, in my case, a count of 16. And your first placement should be in the same place that the chain came out of. Once you've got this row done, and meet me back here, and I'll give you the next row. Right, so this is where we now start the alpine stitch. Okay, so what we're going to do is we are going to chain up one and turn our work. Now take close a close look at where I place my stitches at this point because um, otherwise it will muck up. Okay so now we're going to place a double crochet into that very first spot in the same place as the chain. Our next one is going to go around our stitch so that's our first stitch so we're going to go on to our second one and we're going to do a front post double crochet Our next one is a double crochet into the top of the stitch. Now if you're unsure, have a quick look and it, you will see there's a worked up placement, a gap and a worked up placement. Okay, so that's a quick visual if you're getting a little bit confused. Our next set of stitches are the same as these. So it is a case of going around the front post of our next stitch and then a double crochet on the top of the next one and we will do that all the way to the end of our row. Once you've done that meet me back here and I'll show you how to do the next row. Now your last stitch on this row should be a front post double crochet. Now chain one and turn your work and then we are going to do a, a row of a single crochets all the way along. Okay so for the next row we're going to chain up one and turn our work. Now with this row wherever you put a front post and we're going on top and wherever we did a standard double crochet we're going to do a front post okay so it gets a little bit confusing but what we're going to do is hook over 
can go through this post here that is sitting at the back. Okay, so that's our placement of our very first. Our second double crochet sits on top of that front post. Our next one, let me grab that one from behind. There we go. And we just keep repeating that pattern all the way along. And we do that all the way to the other side. I'll meet you back here in a few moments. Okay, so now a chain one turn your work place a row of single crochets in and this is it it's a simple pattern of um, repeats so it's a row of single crochets and then of course you've got your front post um, sing uh, double crochets on your next row and all you've got to do is make sure that you alternate each um, starting row so one row you'll be picking up over the front post the second row you'll just be working into the top of the stitch from the previous row and it is that simple and we just repeat that until we get the height that we like now there are going to be some adjustments that you will need to make if um, depending on the size that you do now for the repeat for the pocket that I have I have done I have done a total of seven of these front post rows okay so that's how I'm going to count it and I ended with a row of single crochet so I'll meet you back here in a few minutes once you've completed the same if you are upsizing add another row of um, the front posts in for each size that you've gone up until your pocket forms a square right so you've finished your section of pocket now what we're going to do is a single row of single crochet so I grab your pink yarn pop that onto your hook on the very last pull through on the row before let's start that again Right, so you're coming up to your very last row of a single crochet now what we're going to do here is on the very last stitch half complete it with the gray and the very last pull through pull through your color option B okay now a chain one and turn your work now it's a case of putting another row of single crochet all the way along this for a count of 16 18 20 depending on the size that you're doing okay once you've done that tie off your work and sew in your ends okay and you will be all good to go on to the next step which is making the emblem for the pocket a cheeky trick I like to do is actually work over those ends as I'm doing this last row of singles so then I only have to do a minimal amount of sewing in you know what I'm like I hate sewing <laughs> Right, so now you have completed this section as sewing your ends and um, make another one so you have one for each end of your scarf 
All right, so if you click on the link just here, this will take you through to the puzzle piece section where you can choose whether you're making the small for the hat or the medium or the large for the pockets. I will see you all really, really soon for putting it all together. <laughs> And then once you have completed your puzzle pieces, I come back to this video where I will show you how to join it all together. Right, so now for the pocket, what we're going to do is start off with a foundation single crochet chain. And that is going to be to a count of 16. Now, if you haven't come across the foundation single crochet stitch before, then I have made a tutorial and the link will be just here. So if you need to um, have, it, have it sort of explained to you a little bit slower than what I'm going to do today, then hop onto that one and push repeat until it sinks in. Right, sorry, let's get on with it. Right, so what we're going to do is we are going to make ourselves a slip knot. Right, pop that on your hook and then chain up two in the second chain from the hook pop your hook through hook over pull up your yarn keep that one loose hook over pull through one hook over pull through two okay so there is your stitch then we're going to do that again and we're going to repeat that until you have a stitch count of 16 18 20 or 22 and depending on what size scarf you have made Okay, so for myself, I am going to be doing a size um, stitch count of 16. All right, I'll meet you back here in a few moments. Right, so you have got the amount of stitches that you need. As I said, mine is 16. So now what we're going to do is we are going to chain one and turn our work. Now this chain is not going to count as a stitch throughout this pattern okay so now we're going to hook over and we're going to place a double stitch double crochet straight into that very first stitch placement where the chain came out and then we are going to double crochet all the way along okay so uh, once uh, you've done your 16 18 20 22 <laughs> stitches meet me back here and um, i will give you the next row Okay, so you're at the end of the row. Now we're going to chain up one and turn our work. Now we are going to single crochet all the way across this row. Okay, for a count, in my case, a count of 16. And your first placement should be in the same place that the chain came out of. Once you've got this row done, and meet me back here, and I'll give you the next row. Right, so this is where we now start the alpine stitch. Okay, so what we're going to do is we are going to chain up one and turn our work. Now take close a close look at where I place my stitches at this point because um, otherwise it will muck up. So what we're going to do is a... Okay, so now we're going to place a double crochet into that very first spot in the same place as the chain. Our next one is going to go around our stitch so that's our first stitch so we're going to go on to our second one and we're going to do a front post double crochet our next one is a double crochet into the top of the stitch now if you're unsure have a quick look and it, you will see there's a worked up placement a gap and a worked up placement okay so that's a quick visual if you're getting a little bit confused our next set of stitches are the same as these so it is a case of going around the front post of our next stitch and then a double crochet on the top of the next one and we will do that all the way to the end of our row once you've done that meet me back here and i'll show you how to do the next row Now your last stitch on this row should be a front post double crochet. Now chain one and turn your work. 
and then we are going to do a, a row of a single crochets all the way along Okay, so for the next row, we're going to chain up one and turn our work. Now, with this row, wherever you put a front post, and we're going on top, and wherever we did a standard double crochet, and we're going to do a front post. Okay, so it gets a little bit confusing, but what we're going to do is hook over and go through this post here that is sitting at the back. Okay, so that's our placement of our very first. Our second double crochet sits on top of that front post. Our next one, we grab that one from behind. There we go. And we just keep repeating that pattern all the way along. So if it's the double crochet, that was worked normally we do a front post and if it was a front post we work it normally and we do that all the way to the other side i'll meet you back here in a few moments okay so now chain one turn your work place a row of single crochets in And this is it, it's a simple pattern of um, repeats. So it's a row of single crochets, and then of course you've got your front post um, sing, uh, double crochets on your next row. And all you've got to do is make sure that you alternate each um, starting row. So one row, you'll be picking up over the front post. The second row, you'll just be working into the top of the stitch from the previous row. And it is that simple and we just repeat that until we get the height that we like. Now there are going to be some adjustments that you will need to make if um, depending on the size that you do. Now for the repeat for the pocket that I have, I have done I have done a total of seven of these front post rows. Okay, so that's how I'm going to count it. And I ended with a row of single crochet. So I'll meet you back here in a few minutes once you've completed the same. If you are upsizing, add another row of um, the front posts in for each size that you've gone up. Until your pocket forms a square. Right, so you're coming up to your very last row of single crochet. Now what we're going to do here is on the very last stitch, half complete it with the grey and the very last pull through, pull through your colour option B. Okay, now a chain one and turn your work. Now it's a case of putting another row of single crochet all the way along this for a count of 16 18 20 depending on the size that you're doing okay once you've done that tie off your work and sew in your ends okay and you will be all good to go on to the next step which is making the emblem for the pocket a cheeky trick I like to do is actually work over those ends as I'm doing this last row of singles so then I only have to do a 
minimal amount of sewing in. You know what I'm like. I hate sewing. <laughs> Right, so now you have completed this section as sewing your ends and um, make another one so you have one for each end of your scarf then uh, meet me back here for how to make the puzzle piece for this section now that will be the medium size puzzle piece for this scarf pocket and the large puzzle piece for a teen or adult the smaller puzzle piece is used solely on the small hat. <laughs> Again, if you are upsizing the hat, um, it is the small piece puzzle piece for the baby hat and the medium, uh, the smaller piece for a medium size hat. And then for the adult hat, you can upsize to the medium size puzzle piece. All the information will be in the description box down below in case I've completely muddled you like I have myself. <laughs> right, so if you click on the link just here, this will take you through to the puzzle piece section where you can choose whether you're making the small for the hat or the medium or the large for the pockets. And then once you have completed your puzzle pieces, I come back to this video where I will show you how to join it all together. Um, the yarn that we've chosen is the paint box um, DK by Robin. And the reason we have chosen this is because it has a, a very, very short color change, as you can see here. Let's just move that out of the way. As you can see, it's only um, what a hand, hand size amount of each colour as it goes through and we've done that so that we can get as many colours into the square as possible because of course the autism awareness um, puzzle piece has lots of different colours in it all right but for the case of the tutorial today I'm sorry to say it's going to have to be plain it's going to have to be boring and it's going to have to be blue otherwise my poor camera is not going to cope and you will not be able to see where I'm placing the stitches right so we're going to work on the a large one to start with okay and for that you are going to need a four millimeter hook and the DK yarn in the color that you choose or colors depending on if you're working with this one or if you plan to go plain Right, so let's get started. What you're going to do is make a slip knot and pop it on your hook. Now we are going to chain up four. Into that very first chain, we are going to place a slip stitch form it, so it forms a ring. Right, so now chain up two and working over your tail and into the ring we are going to place okay so into our ring we are going to place a double crochet then chain one and place a further three more double crochets into the ring chain one three more double crochets into the ring chain one three more double crochets into the ring Oh. 
chain one at this point you will have a one double crochet or the chain and one double crochet and then a three little clusters of three double crochets place a two double crochets into the center and then a slip stitch to the top of the first stitch your chain does not count okay so now it looks a little bit round with a possible square and yep it is a, a granny square so now on to a row two right so to start row two we need to get over to this little gap here that we have created with our chain one so it is a case of a runner slip stitch along which is normally for a count of one and that will bring you in line with your uh, gap now we are going to a uh, chain up two and into this central section here we are going to place a two double crochets Now chain one and add a further two more a double crochet into that corner. Now we are going to work double crochet along this side making sure that we pick up that first stitch which sometimes can be hidden. Okay. Okay, so that is for a count of three, and then we do more double crochets into that corner, and then a chain one, followed by another two more double crochets. Now we are working along the next side, so again, we are going to place a Three half double, uh, three double crochets. Sorry, into the top of the three stitch uh, double crochets from the row below. Now place two double crochets into the corner with a chain one and a further two more double crochets. Working along the top again, we are going to place three double crochets in the top of the three double crochets from the previous round. Into our last corner, we're going to place our two double crochets, chain one and two double crochets. There we go, so now we are on to our last little section, which is just two double crochets into the top of the two stitches there. And then slip stitch to the top of the chain. And there we go. That is the end of round two. Okay, so now we are on to round three. Now with round three, this is where we add the, um, the dip into the work and of course the bobbles. So it can get a little bit fiddly or a little bit complicated, but just take it slowly and we'll be fine. Right, so first of all, we are going to slip stitch to our corner again. Okay, so for me, that was a count of two. Now we are going to chain up two and into our first and then into this gap we will be placing a two double crochet followed by a chain one 
and two more double crochet okay Let's double crochet along this top section but halfway through we are going to be adding in the bobble we want to do a three half double crochets and then we are going to chain right so now we are going to chain up four into the second chain from the hook we are going to place a half double crochet into our next chain it is another half double crochet into the last it is a slip stitch okay and now what we will be doing is a placing double crochets in the next three stitches that bubble will get in your way <laughs> And that is the first bobble now when it comes to attaching it to your work what you'll do is you'll sew along here and then we pull this bobble over slightly and we'll sew it to the top of these two stitches here which helps it then lay flat before joining it all the way around but let's get back to the pattern right into our corner we are going to add two double crochets A chain one and two more double crochets that brings us up to the corner now this side is our dip okay so it looks a little bit funny it looks a little bit fiddly but honestly it isn't right so and now we are going to do a double crochet into that very first stitch Followed by a half double crochet, and chain one, and then pop a slip stitch into that same stitch. Then we are going to slip stitch a further three times. And chain up two, half double crochet into your next double crochet into the next and then into our corner we are going to place two double crochets a chain one and two double crochets there we go so there is your bobbled section complete uh, sorry your dipped section complete Right, so now we're going to do this bobble section but up the top here so making sure we find that very first stitch put a, a double crochet into the next three stitches chain up four second stitch and down we are going to place a half double crochet and the same in the next stitch is a half double crochet followed by a slip stitch in the last and then working back into our work we are going to do another three half double crochets make that four half double crochets then we place our two half double crochets into our corner chain one two half double crochets now we're going to do this little dip section again 
on the top half that we're working on. So it is double crochet into that very first stitch, followed by a half double crochet, followed by chain one, and down to do a, a slip stitch over the next three. You might get a little bit awkward there because of course you already have your slip stitches from the previous round. Into our next stitch it is a sorry we're going to chain up one and then into the next stitch we are going to do that half double crochet. Now I just don't join to the top of your first chain and wind off and you are done. Now I'm cutting it off quick now whereas what you could do is pull up a decent amount of yarn to then be able to sew around your puzzle piece. <laughs> right so well, what we're going to do is we are going to uh, grab our yarn and grab our hook. I'm using a, a three millimeter and I am quite a tight crocheter so you may decide once you've made one that you need to go down a hook size or a yarn size to make it a little bit smaller but let's see how we go so we're going to place a slip stitch on our hook then chain up four place your hook into that very first chain pull up your yarn and finish it as a slip stitch chain up one then we're going to place a half double crochet into the hole in the middle that you've created Okay, so that's one half double crochet. Now we're going to chain one and we're going to place three more half double crochets into that hole. Followed by a chain one and a further three more half double crochets into that hole. And chain one, three more half double crochets, and chain one, and last bit is a two half double crochets, And you end up the round with a slip stitch into the top of your first half double crochet. Just like that. Right, so I find that very first chain one spot. And what we're going to do is we're going to slip stitch over to it. Okay, and then slip stitch into it. Now chain up one. Now this is the pattern you're going to need for each corner. It is a two half double crochets. Oops, sorry about that. Chain one, two half double crochets. Right, so the first section we're going to make is our first bubble. Okay, so to create the bubble, what you're going to do is we are going to find our very first stitch and place a half double crochet in there then we're going to chain up five and once you have those we are going to place a half double crochet in the second chain down and then in the third chain down we will place a half double crochet and then in the fourth chain we are going to place a slip stitch leave the fifth chain alone because it'll give us a bit of wiggle room for when you attach it to your project right so and then we go back into our main puzzle piece and we add a further half double crochet right and then a, another half double crochet in that very last stitch for this edge now we're back to our corner so again we're going to place two half double crochets 
a chain one and two half double crochets and into that corner section. Now this next line um, we're going to create is our dip down. So all we're going to do here is do three slip stitches which will take us to our next corner. And, and then we are going to a chain up one and then add our two half double crochets, chain one, two half double crochets. Yep. Right, so and now we are back on to the bobble section again. So again, we are going to find our first stitch and place a half double crochet in. Then we're going to chain up five. Into our second chain from the hook, we will be placing a half double crochet. Next chain down is a half double crochet. And then the fourth is our slip stitch. Then we come back into our main work and do a further two half double crochets. Now we're back at our corner again. So that's right, we're going to do that two half double crochets, a chain one and two half double crochets. Now it's just a case of a slip stitching across for a count of three. Right, and then hook over, pull up your yarn, give yourself plenty to sew around your puzzle piece when you're attaching it to your hat. And there you go, you're all done. Now remember, these bubbles look a bit funny, but when you're sewing them on, what you need to do is just shift them across a little bit by sliding them up a little section and then popping the bit down there. And then you'll be able to connect them as you go and sew around them as you go to put them into the right place. And again, and do that on the other side as well. I find that one goes up and one goes down. Hold on, let's see if I can get it to sit flat. There you go, so it all look something, hopefully, like this. Right, now let's move on to the next one. Right, so and now let's move on to the middle size one. For this one, you are going to need a 3.5 millimetre hook and your choice of yarn. So first of all, we're going to make a slip knot, pop that onto our chain. Right, so now we are going to a chain up four. Into the very first chain, we are going to place our hook, pull up a loop and create a slip stitch by pulling it through the next loop. Now we are going to and chain up one. Right, so we will be working into the gap between your um, that your chain has made. So we're working into the ring. We're also going to work over our loose tail at the same time. Saves the sewing in. So you've chained one, and now we are going to add one half double crochet into that loop. Chain one. Now place a three half double crochets into that hole. Followed by chain one. Now add another three half double crochets. And chain one. 
and then another three half double crochets. And so now into your, in this ring, you should have that one double crochet followed by a three, a three and a three. So that's three lots of three. Now we're going to add two uh, chain one and do a two more half double crochets. And then a slip stitch into the top of the very first half double crochet to close up your round. Okay, so we should have a tiny, tiny little square. Now on to round two. For round two, we are going to slip stitch one. Okay, slip stitch two. So then that brings us, that takes us then to that chain one space. Now we are going to chain up one. Place a two half double crochets into that spot, followed by a chain one, and a further two more half double crochets into that space. Now we're going to work along this edge here. So making sure you find your very first stitch, we will place three half double crochets in. So that's one in the next three stitches. Now we've made our way to that next corner. And so into that corner, we are going to place a two half double crochets, a chain one and two half double crochets. Right, so making sure that you get into that very first stitch, I'm going to place three half double crochets along this edge. And then into our corner placement, we will do two half double crochets, a chain one and two half double crochets. Okay, so now we are on to um, side number three. So again, we are placing our three double crochets, making sure you get that very first stitch. So that's three half double crochets along that edge. And then into our chain one space. Again, it is two double crochets chain one and two double crochets now we're on to our final section here so all we need to now do is make sure we get that very first stitch place a hook through there we go pull up your yarn and we're going to do three half double crochets along our work and then a slip stitch into the top of your very first half double crochet to close there we go so that is the end of round two now they were the easy rounds our next round we will be making the dips and the bobbles Right, so then we are going to slip stitch into the top of the next stitch and then slip stitch into the chain. There we go, just like that. Now I'm going to chain one and place a two half double crochets followed by a, a chain one and another two double crochets into that corner gap. Now, 
now it's time to make the bobble so what we're going to do making sure you get your very first stitch is half double crochet for a count of four now we're going to chain up four and into the second chain from the hook you're going to do a half double crochet the third chain from the hook it's a half double crochet and then into our last stitch it is a slip stitch now yes it looks a bit weird but once you turn it onto its side when we sew it in it will form a really nice little bubble right so now we are going to finish up by placing one half double crochet into the next two spots that's the end of this row complete now into our corner and we will place our two half double crochets chain one and two half double crochets now for this side we are doing our dip again so it matches the other side so that is half double crochet into the first followed by a chain one and slip stitch along for a, a count of four chain one half double crochet into the next stitch and then we are on our corner so again we do our two half double crochets followed by the chain one and two half double crochets now we're working on to our very last side so for this one making sure you get that first stitch placement you are putting four half double crochets in now we're going to chain up four place your first half double crochet in the second chain from the hook and then another half double crochet in the third chain from the hook and our slip stitch in that last chain and coming back to your main piece of your work you are going to place in a half double crochet into the next stitch now it is quite awkward to find because of course we have run that slip stitch over the top of this stitch here and the next one so you want two more half double crochets and then we will be a slip stitch in to the top of the very first stitch from the last round now I like to chain up to cut off my work giving myself enough yarn to sew it onto your item whether it be the hat or the scarf scooch down your knots and there we go we're done now when it comes to uh, sewing this on remember you are going to pull these bubbles one is going to come downwards which will create um, a nice little bit there a little bump there and then the other one goes the uh, in the other direction so then it makes it equal okay so and there is your very first jigsaw puzzle piece So, and now you have all your pieces, it is time to assemble. First of all, we will be sewing on our puzzle piece onto the pocket. Now you can place it however you feel. So whether you want it with it facing the bubbles upwards or the bubbles sideways, choice is all yours. So what we do is we will sew around this section going through all parts of the fabric. Then once you're done there, sew in those ends and then we bring out our scarf okay so with your scarf and your pocket complete you're going to lay over your work and i like to attach mine on the top 
of this second set of ribbing here okay so I will then sew it um, and down one side and across the bottom and then up the other side okay so then it will be sitting let me and just zoom out my camera give me a moment and so it will be sitting and uh, just like this so this section here um, sits at the bottom of the grey so you don't see any difference and then when the top piece is on that also sits there so that when it's open you will see the little bit of the pink there but otherwise you don't really see much difference okay I am now going to sew this all together off screen and I will show you it fully in a moment now remember you can swap the size of your puzzle piece so if you're not keen on the medium or the small being here you can opt to go larger okay and just the same as you can opt to add more um, on the sides now the reason I have kept my main pattern quite plain um, I'm not going to be using the multicolor I'm actually going to use a solid pink and the reason I've done that is because the people in my family that are affected um, by autism or Asperger's are not very good with uh, busy things so this would uh, cause a belt down <laughs> Um, we can get away with the pocket texture that is fine I've already road tested it um, but in regards to anything a bit more bright and a bit more bouncy and this is about as much as they can handle with a pink emblem to match in because if it doesn't match and the sides aren't straight and they're this and they're that then it won't get used and it won't get worn by them but then that is just solely my family members your family members will probably absolutely adore um, your pattern however it turns out right so I'm gonna as I said I'm gonna head off camera now sew all this together and I'll show you my finished scarf in a few moments <laughs> 